fanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The man is incredible. The thrill of victory. The youngest champion. And the agony of defeat. Oh, look, look at him go! Oh, baby. Oh, no. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Babies are babies, whether human or equine. All promise and hope, as soft as love, as unpredictable as tomorrow. As fragile as a house of cards. The human baby's future is limitless, but the thoroughbreds is narrowly focused to win the triple crown, and only 11 have ever accomplished it. Since 1978, three quarters of a million foals have been born, and none have done it since a firm 20 years ago. Today, as we watch, Real Quiet faces the toughest challenge in all of sport. If he wins, he'll share the glory with his family. Trainer, Bob Baffert. Owner, Mike Pegram. And jockey, Kent DeZormo. And Baffert will be king of the classics. This would be the pinnacle of any trainer to win the Triple Crown. And so, I never thought I'd get this far. Last year, Baffert built his house layer upon layer, winning the Derby and the Preakness. But it was a fragile house of cards, remember? Touch Gold knocked it down when he dealt Silver Charm a bad hand. So for Baffert, it's still a dream. But for some, the house of cards has stayed intact. Penny Chennery, cheering secretary at home a quarter of a century ago in the Belmont, watching him achieve sport's most amazing runaway. Winning the Triple Crown with Secretariat really gave me an identity from just being wife and mother. I was Secretariat's mother. I, I had done something, something wonderful that happened in my life, and it's indelible. I love it. We cheer on our children at graduation and marriage and success in life. The opportunities are frequent, but for the horse owner, there's just one triple crown and a firm achievement in his classic duel with Alidar. When he put his nose in front at the wire, um, 20 years later, I'm sure many, many years from now, it's something we will never forget. Fifty years after Citation gave him a triple crown victory, 91-year-old Jimmy Jones still fills with wonder at the memory. It was a dream. You never dreamed that you could run into that in your life. And now, the family of real quiet waits and hopes and prays, each with his own reasons. There's three the reasons I want to win the triple crown. The horse, Bob Baffert, and Kenton Sorkin. Because they're all three deserving of it. I really feel my chances are great. I think I can get, we can get that one done. But somebody should date me or something for the Belmont. I think uh, every, my, every I think every emotion I ever had would come out. I'd probably cry. And maybe we'll cry with him if real quiet makes the crowd roar for his triple crown. It is the way royalty arrives. On Wednesday morning at nearby Kennedy Airport, a chartered aircraft set down, carrying one horse, three humans, and a dream of a lifetime, all then shepherded to Belmont Park by a police escort. Today, those same three men and their horse come to the track to find out what destiny has in store. Will their names be etched into racing immortality, or will their grand vision be reduced to just another footnote? In less than an hour, a crowd of about 70,000 will get the answer firsthand, having gathered at this historic oval just outside the New York City limits. It's the Big Apple's biggest day of racing, the day of the Belmont Stakes. I'm Al Michaels, and welcome to New York. It's a beautiful day, and we know we will see the 130th running of the Belmont Stakes. The question is, will we see a coronation? It has become fashionable in some racing circles to denigrate real quiet. Say his bloodlines are ordinary. He was purchased for seventeen thousand dollars. He's not that fast. The competition is not that good. But keep in mind, in sports and horse racing in particular, greatness is relative. The two biggest superstars in this sport in the last twenty years have been John Henry and Cigar. Neither won a Triple Crown race. Neither was so much as entered in a Triple Crown race. The greatness of real quiet or lack thereof has yet to be determined. Is he the best horse in this field? Absolutely. Is he the best horse in this field today? 
That's what makes racing so fascinating, and that's why we are here. It is a field of 11, originally 13 horses. If we, if we take a look at the odds, there have been two scratches. Hanneman Highway had the human equivalent last night of an upset stomach, was scratched this morning. Number two is Thomas Joe with the great Chris McCarron in the saddle at 25 to 1. Number three is basic trainee last in the Kentucky Derby, but he's here 96 to 1. Chalito was entered in midweek with Robbie Davis up. Speed Horse, 81 to 1. Parade Ground is 18 to 1 with Hall of Famer Pat Day aboard. Classic Cat, good performance in the Freakness. Finished third there. John Velasquez up 8 to 1. Limit out with Jean-Luc Samin in the irons at 20 to 1. Then there's real quiet. Right now, odds on at odds of 4 to 5. Hot Wells was scratched this morning. More on that in a moment. Raffi's Majesty, lightly raced colt. Number 10 is 13 to 1. Then Victory Gallop, the Derby and Preakness runner-up, second choice, 5 to 1. And the two Wayne Lucas horses on the outside. Uncoupled in the betting, Yarrow Bray at 31 to 1 and Grand Slam at 6 to 1. Visa will award a $5 million bonus to the connections of Real Quiet if he wins this race today as part of the Visa Triple Crown Challenge. Now, we talked about Hot Wells, and there he is. He was scratched this morning. For the reason, here's Mike Hoblock, who is the chairman of the New York State Racing and Wagering Board. The horse was scratched because the owner is not licensed as a thoroughbred owner in the state of New York. This came to our attention as far as the Racing and Wagering Board is concerned just yesterday after we checked into who uh, owned the stable uh, that dropped this horse into the box two days ago. Uh, at the time that the horse was originally entered, it was entered under the name of a stable uh, that we were not aware of in New York because the stable was not registered in New York, so therefore we had to check all the licensing, found out that uh, the owner was not licensed. Hot Wells finished fourth in the Freakness. His owner is Mike Lasky, also known as Mike Warren, variously described from time to time as a scam decapper and a tout, and since he wasn't licensed, that horse is out. The field is 11 today. Okay, you've looked at the field, and now let's go down to the winner's circle. And our winner, as always, Jim McKay. Jim. Thanks a lot, Al. You know, to me, the Triple Crown is like the Olympics in the way it's organized. It isn't a season-long competition like baseball or football. For the Triple Crown, the organizers announced that the three races will be held on certain days at certain times, just as the Olympic events are announced well in advance. If your horse is fit and ready at those precise moments, then he or she may join the 11 others who have accomplished this most difficult of sports achievements. Now, others may have legitimate reasons for not being ready at the appointed hour because of illness, injury, or you know, lack of timing in their training, but that's the challenge of the Triple Crown. Three races at varying distances in five weeks in three states, and that's why this great crowd is here today. But remember, of the 26 horses who have won the first two jewels of the crown, only 11 have gone on to win the Belmont, and there they are. Well, Kent DeZormo has guided real quiet to this decisive day, and he's really loved every minute of it. What else is there? I don't know. Woo! Woo! We're back! Back to the circle! And uh, how is this very enthusiastic young Cajun behaving on this biggest day of his racing life? Well, let's check in with him and Leslie Visser. Jimmy won his first Kentucky Derby, his first Preakness, and now he holds destiny in his hand. Ken, so far, congratulations, but big day today. You said that you are 98% sure of victory today. kind of close to Joe Namath. Well, Leslie, there's always room for error. There still is horse racing. You know, uh, I'm about as close to the horse's mouth as you can get. And one thing's for sure, he can't tell us if he has a headache today. <laughs> well, you know, you had a triumphant homecoming back in Maryland. Your horse made a huge move on the turn at the Preakness. Maybe you could tell us about it. And look, right in here, we had kind of slowed the pace back down because uh, we only had but one target to catch. And um, it just as no sooner had I settled him in the stride, it looked like the car opened up. And right there, I asked him to go. And he just inhaled him and passed right on by. Um, now he's like, where did they go? He's looking for competition. Most of his golf in here, because he thinks I'm going to steer him through the gate again. It's parked right outside there, and uh, right here, it should have to work. Well, you got him right out from ah. there. Beautiful ride from you, and that's twice now that he's made the big move to beat ah. Victor Gallup. Tactically, what do you expect today? Well, you know, I think the most important thing for him to do today is just get him comfortable. It's a mile and a half race, Leslie, and, um, 
if I can get him in that nice, beautiful, fluid stride that he has, I think he'll gallop most of them into the ground today. And uh, we can knock the Visa Triple Crown out. <laughs> well, good luck to you, Ken. You've come a long way from riding those Shetland ponies in Maurice, Louisiana. Jim? <laughs> okay, Leslie. You know, when the uh, Triple Crown was most recently won, Jimmy Carter was president, and Kent DeSormo, well, he was eight years old. The horse, we all know, is a fern. And they're his owners, Patrice and Louis Wilson, right here in their box at the Belmont today. You can be sure the memory is strong in their minds on this Triple Crown Day. Affirmed as a three-year-old was still very immature. Aligar was a big, powerful horse. And, and of course, young Steve Coffin was just a teenager. It's the third for Stevie Coffin, showing the way by two and a half. Aligar is third, but it's going to be a third. A third for Steve Coffin is going to win the winning fourth running of the Kentucky Derby. Aligar is second, believe it, third. Aligar is charging at him. Coming on to the 16th hole. It's a third. Aligar on the outside. They come on down to the finish. A third and Aligar. Here's the finish. A third wins it. Aligar is beaten by a net. It's Alidar and Affirm battling back along the inside. We'll test these two to the wire. Affirm under a left-hand whip. Alidar on the outside driving. Affirm and Alidar heads apart. Affirm got a nose in front as he come on to the wire. That's the finish is going to be dead tight. Alidar is second. Steve Collins to lose the crowd. My heart was, was pounding. pounding. And the stands were just roaring. And... And the noise was deafening. And to know that we had bred him and raised him is something that will stay with us forever. So you'd like to buy a racehorse. Well, you might want to consider this. The 11 most expensive yearlings purchased in the history of thoroughbred racing cost a grand total of $75.8 million and returned on the racetrack a little more than a quarter of a million dollars. In other words, for every $300 invested, the return was $1. Then there's real quiet at the opposite end of the spectrum. He was purchased for $17,000. His career earnings almost $2 million. If he wins today, his career earnings will be more than seven and one half million dollars. Only in the wild and wacky world of thoroughbred racing, Jim McKay. Well, Al, whether they're humans or horses, we always see great athletes in the full flower of their talent. We like to know where they come from and what they endured to get here. Some stories are routine, others quite remarkable, like real quiet. Racing is full of Cinderella stories, and real quiet is one of the best. Purchased for $17,000, that's $500 cheaper than Triple Crown winner Seattle's Blue. He wasn't much to look at. He was all right from the side, but from the front, well, his sire, Quiet American, was a very good racehorse. As a matter of fact, he won two graded stakes, including this win in the Naira Mile. But he isn't a famous sire. Real Quiet was a veterinarian's nightmare. Dr. John Madison wondered why Baffert bought him. When I first saw Real Quiet, he was a yearling that I certainly didn't think held much promise uh, to go on and become a successful racehorse. He was narrow-chested, knock-kneed, and, and rotated out in both front feet. Well, they straightened out his knees with wires and screws, but only Bob Baffert seemed to think he was worth much at the Keeneland sale. I went and bought the horse, he went for 17000 So my first initial reaction was, does he have cancer or is he missing a leg? I go, no, just a little... A little narrow, but he's from beautiful from the side, Mike. He's beautiful. We refer to him as a tropical fish because from the side, if you look at tropical fish in the tank, they look great. But then, when you got the uh, front shot, go around and get the front shot. He was very narrow, but he sold out since then. I mean, he was like this. But he is jaw. He is jaw. Yes, they called him the fish. He couldn't win in his first six starts as a sprinter, even on lesser tracks down in New Mexico. But Bob Baffert kept his dreams real quiet. He put blinkers on the colt, ran him at longer distances, and slowly, slowly, things began to change. 